This is a quiz about everything, literally everything, although mainly easy stuff that's not too depressing. <laughs> You can play along at home, or you can pretend you're in an episode of Gogglebox by getting hammered and slagging us off. <laughs> Whatever works for you. <laughs> Remember, if you want to play the quiz with friends whilst you watch at home, you'll need pen and paper. And if you want to play with yourself while watching at home, you'll need this. <laughs> OK, let's meet our teams. Uh, one dresses like a massive nerd, the other dresses like a massive bird. It's Richard Iowati and Noel Fielding! <laughs> Next up, a comedian famous for making silly online videos and a broadcaster obsessed with comic books. It's the totally grown-up and mature Adam Buxton and Jonathan Ross. <laughs> and finally, a match made in heaven, presumably by a drunk angel on work experience. It's Ashley B and Rob Beckett. <laughs> Richard, what, what have you brought? Flask. Got a flask. What's, what's in the flask? It's mainly uh, tea. <laughs> it is, it's tea. It's a mixture of tea and um, tears. <laughs> um, uh, no, Richard, who do you think's your biggest competition this evening? Mm, um, ourselves. <laughs> we could turn in on ourselves. It's happened before. Yeah. Like Ronnie O'Sullivan. <laughs> the only person who can beat Ronnie O'Sullivan is Ronnie O'Sullivan. <laughs> <laughs> I went to see Ronnie O'Sullivan once play uh, in the final of the snooker and half time he went, fancy going to get a booner? <laughs> I mean, who has a booner and a then booner. still wins? It's pretty remarkable. Right? <laughs> you got a team name? Um, the Booners. The Booners. <laughs> we ought to take, we should have like a pun name, you know, like natural born quizzes, something like that. <laughs> I'm sticking with Booners. <laughs> Born boonus, Natural born boonus. Natural born boonus. Natural born boonus. Boonai? If there's a lot of boonus, would it be? Yeah. Boonai. The Sultan thereof? The Sultans of Boonai. <laughs> That's a great team, though. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Right. The Sultans of Boonai. <laughs> <laughs> Adam, Jonathan, you're both, you're both kind of nerds. Who's the biggest nerd? Well, I don't... Do you, do you define yourself as a nerd? No, I define myself as a kind of cool guy. Oh. <laughs> I think mean, you're the coolest guy I've met. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I, I look like a cool guy. Yes. I act and sound like and think like a cool guy. Yes. So I don't know. I, the whole nerd thing is very uh, patronising, just because I'm involved with the internet. Yes. You know, the internet is now no longer just the uh, preserve of nerds, Jimmy. That's the kind of thing a nerd would say, though. <laughs> Do you have a team name? Well, we've thought about this. We actually okay. thought about this. Some of us right. put a bit of thought in this evening. Really? You won't beat Sultans of Boonai. No, we're, <laughs> we're both fathers. We're both fathers. Sure. And we are in touch with the young people via our children. So we're going to call ourselves Dank Meme. Because Dank means super good. <laughs> yeah, that is... I mean, you are two massive nerds. I think they're just two great guys trying their best. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's your team name, two great guys trying their best. <laughs> <laughs> that should be your team name, We're yeah. going to take Come that on. name. We are two great guys just trying their best. <laughs> I think we might just have to go for the acronym, because it just says two great guys trying was always the best. <laughs> 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 I like that. <laughs> and then you've got the emoticon at the end. It's the kind of thing they think's cool. <laughs> Uh, Ashley, Rob, yes. yeah, this is your first time with the Big Fat Quiz. You confident? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm very confident. I'm not. No. Are you not? <laughs> well, it's a big, it's a big Fat Quiz of everything, and I don't know everything. Yeah. So, well, not a bit, but have you got a team name? Um, I was thinking long and hard about what a tough journey it's been for both of us to get to this point today, and I'm, I kind of based our name on what's been, in many ways, helped us, but also been a hindrance, Rob. Am I right? I don't know what the team name is. Good. <laughs> we are calling ourselves uh, the Tits and Teeth. <laughs> Um, my, only, my only problem with the name is I was um, very fat as a child, and that was oh. that was my nickname at school. <laughs> How large were you? Were you extraordinarily large? I, well, I was so well, especially as a toddler, I was so fat I couldn't wear socks. <laughs> 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 my mum 
put me in jelly shoes instead. What did you wear when you had the jelly shoes on? Because you can't really wear, like, a tweed suit with jelly shoes. Yeah, but how many kids you see in tweed suits? <laughs> <laughs> All day. Yeah. <laughs> OK, the first round is all about history. We'll be talking about things from the past that are super old and a bit weird. No offence, Jonathan and Adam. <laughs> 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 Genuinely annoyed. 15th century ruler Vlad the Impaler wiped out whole villages by impaling people on stakes. Gruesome, but it did lead one bright spark to invent the kebab. <laughs> During his long campaign for civil rights, Martin Luther King was arrested 30 times, which makes me wonder how much more he could have achieved if he wasn't always getting into bother. <laughs> of course, it wouldn't be a quiz without questions, so question number one on history. During his reign, Napoleon Bonaparte wrote a number of saucy letters to his shorty, Josephine. According to legend, he once told her he was coming home in three days and asked her not to do something. What was it? <laughs> Yeah. Ashling's doing the writing, Rob there. Just, Learning just, it. Uh, yeah. I'm teaching him to, to write and to read. Ah, yeah. 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 They're just shapes to him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> OK. Right, next question. The children of Mitchellbrook Primary School in Neasden have once again put on one of their unusual school plays. What historical event are they acting out here? Goo goo ga ga blah blah blah. Oh no, he's gone mad. Hands up, who wants to be a king? Oh, me, 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 me. I'm the proper king. Yay! No, I'm the proper king. Yay! We think we actually. Yeah. <laughs> Let's fight. <laughs> Run away! Ah! Ah! Yes, I'm the king. Yay! Can we come out now? No. <laughs> the children of Mitchellbrook Primary School there. But what are they acting out? All right, take a look at this fascinating clip from highbrow documentary series Horizon, where two vocal coaches are working on a cutting-edge theory. I want to know, what are they trying to recreate here? Let's try male human voice, count over three. One, two, three. Just pitch up your voice. One, two, three. Let's just add a bit of nasal now. One, two, three. Now, the other thing that would be happening, which would actually increase that quality, is a very heavy skull that seems to pull down into the throat there. Now, speak. One, two, three. Now, let's make a sound. Just let's make a huge R. Yeah, those are the people that made Boris Johnson there. Uh, <laughs> so what, what are they trying to recreate there? OK, have you got that one? For our next question, it's over to supermodel and racing driver Jodie Kidd. <laughs> Hi, Jimmy. According to Greek mythology, the first human woman that the gods created was Pandora, and she was very famous for opening a box. But what was inside this box? Why is human a qualifier before woman? <laughs> I think some of the gods were sort of female, but then they were, they were gods, not human. But are they women? Some of the gods, yeah. They can be women. Sure. I mean, it's all made up, so... <laughs> the thing about mythology is it women is... Women aren't real? It <laughs> 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 was a very good disappearing sound effect. So, what was in Pandora's box? OK. Right. OK, you got it? Yeah. You all got something? Is okay, that the end of that ready round? ready for answers? Sure. Yes. So, according to popular legend, Napoleon asked his boo, Josephine, not to do something for three days before he returned home. What was it? Watch Ooh. Game of Thrones without him. <laughs> <laughs> OK, a Ashling, Rob, did you get an answer for this? We put, don't overcook the booner, <laughs> or you won't get to see my bone apart. <laughs> no, Richard. Not have sex with a booner. <laughs> For, for three days. <laughs> I'd put, uh, commit genocide. <laughs> we did put wash as well, there. Where's what? Oh, yeah, I can vaguely see that, yeah. Well, the answer was he asked her not to wash. Wow. So, Noel oh, and Richard, but... get the point. Thank you. Yeah. That's his preference. He said, don't wash. Why don't you want her to wash? I think it's best to wash, isn't it? Everyone's got it. Even if you have to just dip it in the sink five minutes before. <laughs> 
OK, next up, you saw the children of Mitchellbrook <laughs> Primary School in Neesden putting on one of their special school plays. Uh, what were they acting out? <laughs> no, Richard, what is that? I, I, was on a, I was on a tea jag here. So I put Game of Thrones, cos I haven't seen it. <laughs> then Miami Vice, the Colin Farrell version, which you must see if, you, if anyone... <laughs> haven't seen that, okay. do yourself a favour and, and please watch that. And also, uh, War of the Roses. War of the, the Roses? Michael so, there, so, just, um, there's some fun there. Two bits of fun, then a fact. <laughs> uh, Jonathan, uh, Adam. We were thinking it was uh, fairly clearly Drake and Meek Mill <laughs> um, arguing about ghost writing. Yes. <laughs> Who's Meek Mill? Who's Meek Mill? What? <laughs> Where did they get this guy? <laughs> you know when you have a sleepover, your mates and he's a kid and the dad comes in and starts trying to banter everyone? This is not that... <laughs> what are you doing, guys? <laughs> <laughs> I love that new track. We were coming to go, we love that new track, but they don't try and put socks on him, it'll cut off the circulation. <laughs> OK, what, what did you give this, uh, Rob, Ashling? Oh, you got, I think well, you got it right. Oh, we did get the answer. We put War of the Roses, and then we just put two little knobs that we both drew each. <laughs> Ashling went for the more normal um, knob and balls, and yeah. mine's quite accurate, so accurate, in fact, you've got to wait till question three. <laughs> See the rest of it. Yeah. OK, so War of the Roses was the, was the correct answer. That's what they were writing out. So points, points, mm, no points. Yeah. OK, I showed you a clip of a highbrow Horizon documentary. What were they trying to recreate? What have you put? OK, Rob, Ashley, what did you get? Well, I'm pretty sure of the right answer, and it is Richard III. OK, and, Because and... he had uh, his... when he was found, because he had a car park uh, fall down on top of him. <laughs> and so he, underneath, he was like, Oh, help! Get me out! <laughs> OK, Richard, no, you, you put... Yeah, uh, Richard III's voice. Adam, Jonathan, what have you got for this? Well, we thought they were trying to get him to speak like David Beckham. <laughs> they then we realised that was silly, and then we put... Uh, he, they're trying to get him to speak like a Neanderthal. A Neanderthal. Because the clue was when they said the thick head, the, the thicker skull. Well, I can tell you the answer is Neanderthal. Oh, oh, no! They were trying to recreate a Neanderthal voice. Yes. <laughs> now, finally, Jody Kidd asked you, according to Greek mythology, what's in Pandora's box? <laughs> Oh, we put slightly smaller box <laughs> slash anus. <laughs> and then Richard said, no, it's evil, and I thought he said eagle. <laughs> <laughs> Jonathan, what did you go for? That's we nice. went with uh, Noel Edmonds, etc. and just to make it very clear, that applies to general evil. Evil in general. <laughs> Ashley, Rob, what was in Pandora's box? Um, a load of fucking trouble. <laughs> To be honest with you, I just thought to sell bracelets. <laughs> well, I, I think you all got that. There was uh, there were points around because it was all the evil in the world plus hope. Oh yes, mm. there's hope in there as well. So it's uh, quite a lot of Donald Trump and then a tiny bit of Obama. <laughs> At the end of the first round, let's look at the scores. OK, I can tell you, uh, Adam and Jonathan have two points. Ashling and Rob have two points. In the lead, Nolan Richard, who would have thought it with three points? <laughs> Join us after the break, because let's face it, the alternative is talking to your partner. We got you over a barrel here. See you in a bit. <laughs> Welcome back to the Big Fat Quiz of Everything. Our next round is all about science and technology. In 1895, the Nobel Prize was established. Since then, it's been awarded for achievements in areas such as physics, chemistry, medicine, and hopefully one day soon, knob gags. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Surely the prize for the knob gags would be called the Nobel End. <laughs> For our first science and technology question, it's over to Dr. Christian Jessen. Hey, Jimmy, it's your doctor here. Look, I've got your results. That rash that you had is actually perfectly normal, but look, the other thing... <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, this is this. Oh, look, <laughs> your pardon. I've got a question for you and your teams. What I want to know is, what is the largest organ in the human body? I'll give you a call later about that other thing, OK? <laughs> Jimmy. Yeah. Sorry about the rash. <laughs> <laughs> so what was the question? I was so distracted by his what chest. The I question is, what is the largest organ in the no, human body? Isn't it? Uh, you think we're going to make obvious jokes about obvious things here. 
We know what you think. Okay, has everyone got an answer? Right, next question. Take a look at these scribblings from a 19th century notepad. What theory is being represented here for the very first time? I, I can tell you, the writing above the diagram says, case must be that one generation then should be as many living as now. To do this and to have many species in the same genus requires extinction. I mean, that can't be clearer. <laughs> <laughs> Looks a lot like one of Richard and Noel's answers. <laughs> yes, yes, we've got this. I've got a special treat for you now. Uh, Joey Essex has made a remarkable documentary about one of his scientific heroes. Who on earth is he talking about? Hello, I'm Joey Essex, and I'm here today to talk to you about one of the most cleverest British geezers in the history of British geezers. <laughs> this guy was the Don Daddy of physics. He invented calculus. And not even an A-star student would even know what that means. His most famous theory was for every opposite, there was an equal action of every side. I mean, how can you discover anything in this? He discovered rainbows. Every action was taken for the opposite... Uh... <laughs> Once he was in a park and an apple fell off a tree and bounced straight on his nut, he went and told all his friends that he'd discovered gravity. What a clever legend. <laughs> For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. <laughs> so there you have it. A clever maths geek who loved rainbows. He loved gold and he absolutely loved an apple. But he never slept with a bird. <laughs> Joey Essex there, but who on earth is he talking about? You've got stuff. Yeah. What are you having? I was just eating from a tray. Oh, yeah. He's on sugar now. He's just gone crazy. Because I, 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 I went down hard. What are they? I've got, got olives. Flush. It's a mixture of Maltesers <gasps> oh, and Maltesers. giant chocolate butter. I like the Maltesers. Rich man's olives. Jimmy, watch out. There's a Malteser coming <laughs> home. Thank you. Yeah. You know I don't like fun. Ashley, from there. <laughs> OK, here we go. This is the most sport I've ever done. <laughs> <laughs> Richard's. Where's Richard's tray? Richard's you need that back. Hey, look, oh, that, oh, that's pretty good. Oi, this is like every. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like what? every break time at school. There's always someone like you with my tray of Maltesers. <laughs> what are you going to do, mate? What are you <laughs> to the future, <laughs> there. Oh, my God! Yeah. <laughs> that is exactly who he is. I know. You're even wearing the jacket. <laughs> I'm sorry. Jimmy, you've lost control of the class. <laughs> you've watched bullying happen and you've you just let it go. You made a choice and it was documented. And I'm taking this matter to tribunal. <laughs> <laughs> because we are in the workplace. <laughs> Sorry, Rich. I'll buy you some more. I called you Rich. Is okay. that all right? Hey, Rob, it's yeah. your rodeo. No, I'm Rob. It, no. <laughs> it's your rodeo. Oh, it's your rodeo, not your rodeo. OK. No, I would never insist that you are rodeo. <laughs> Rodeo's a cool name, aren't it? <laughs> rodeo. One more question. OK, take a look at this clip from 1969. What are these school children doing? OK, please, have the keys are in. Right, keys in. Can you check this oil level, please, Harry? Oil OK. Right, can you check these temperatures, please, Malcolm? OK, disc up to speed. Hello, alternator house. Disc oil and temperature OK. Is it OK your end? <laughs> right, uh, OK for standby. Switch on standby, Peter. Standby coming on. OK, so the question is, what are Richard Arwadi's classmates doing now? <laughs> oh, I've just written that as a joke. Yeah. Fuck you, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> I put Richard Arwadi's classmates doing now. Oh, I 
Richard's 18th birthday party. Yeah. Yeah. I was there. That's it was right. horrible. Use me, <laughs> use me as a premise. Rodeo man over there. These two ancient fucks. <laughs> <laughs> the fucking crow boy. This is I've the tea. Half a button. <laughs> Richard, this is the tea right. talking. Goes, by the way, Morton Harkett called. He wants his fucking jacket back. <laughs> All right. I don't know anything. You don't know anything. You were born 20 minutes ago. <laughs> Your hair's still wet from the fucking womb. <laughs> All right, Richard, you keep <laughs> don't, you keep, don't. You keep You've finished all my sweets. <laughs> you know, it was like five years of that. Five long years. Every day I bought a tray of sweets and a fucker <laughs> like you took them. <laughs> Doing that exact thing. I did. I worked hard in the morning to find my tray of sweets. I have got a tray. That's why they stole them. They were yeah, exactly yeah, yeah, they were uncovered. Hey, they were uncovered. I should have clean filmed them. You should have. You should have. And by the time I was 15, I clean filmed them. You should have learned to share, Richard, that maybe I have can't hear the blood in my ears now. <laughs> they're, still, they're, they're still in good no. shape. Richard, would you like some tea? It's very hard for me to climb down from this energy. <laughs> it's very hard. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how to climb down. Look, have a cola bottle, you'll be fine. No. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, have you all got some answers? Oh, uh, Jonathan, Adam, if you could write oh, something down. We I haven't done that answer I know yet. it's easy to forget when you're at your age. Uh, <laughs> Ancient fucks. <laughs> For Richard, but you have at least given Jonathan and Adam a new sort of identity. Well, <laughs> are you ready for some answers? Yes, Jim. Of course you are. Okay. So, Dr. Christian asked you, what's the largest organ in the human body? What do you all put? We he resisted the temptation to do any kind of a penis joke, and we just went straight for what we believe to be the fact the liver is the largest organ in the body, Jimmy. No, Richard. At first, I put the bum bum shoe. <laughs> what is the bum bum shoe? It's an organ that hasn't been invented yet. <laughs> Then I put liver is king, because I heard Poirot say that once. He went to... <laughs> is that where you get most of your education from, Poirot? Agatha Christie, yeah. What was Agatha Christie like, Jonathan? <laughs> <laughs> Ashling, Rob. At first, when you said, what's the biggest organ, we immediately wrote down, oi, oi, for laughs. <laughs> uh, then we wrote the intestines. Oh, two yeah. times. Oh, oh. oh, sorry, the large intestines. Mm. <laughs> Still no, but better. Oh, the extra large. <laughs> <laughs> I thought this was quite an easy one, but clearly not. The largest organ in the human body is, in fact, the skin. The skin? Oh, that's the not skin. Skin. No, what is it? Jimmy, I mean, in terms of a democracy, if two of us, when we live at, you should give us the point for two, because you oh, yeah, say... yeah, that's how quizzes work. Yeah, well, no, I think yeah. you say... Yeah, no, no, definitely, no, yeah. None of us... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Jimmy. Jimmy, none of us... Oh, yeah. definitely happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK, I showed you a picture of a 19th century notebook. <laughs> what theory was being expounded for the first time? How Jimmy's jokes work. <laughs> They appear to have form, <laughs> but when you break it down, <laughs> there's something quite angry there. <laughs> uh, Adam, Jonathan, what have you got? Well, we were thinking it might be the first tweet, but then we realised that was silly, so we went with natural selection. We think it's the Darwinian theory of the evolution of species. Ooh, Ashley, Rob, what do you think? I mean, Darwin. <laughs> And I put survival of the fittest, not Love Island. <laughs> well, that's exactly the right answer. Yes, that was Darwin's notebook. And that was the first time he ever wrote down the theory of evolution. Yeah. Look, we, we put we evolution put at the start. And, you know, we went on a, a comic riff that has ended up costing us. I, can see, I think I can see evolution written there. Yeah. I think you all get a point there, yeah. Marvellous. <laughs> all right. Um, you saw a documentary by our resident brain box, Joey Essex. Uh, who was he talking about? 
Sir Isaac Newton. Uh, Ashling, Rob? We have Newton, but not to be confused with Olivia nay John. And, <laughs> yeah, and I just wrote Bosch next to it, because I was excited I got two so in a row. confident, Richard. <laughs> no, Richard, what, what... I, I can see Isaac Newton. What else have you done? Well, we got that. I thought it was a bit easy, so I wrote Ronald McDonald. <laughs> and then did a drawing of him. <laughs> I went to your Halloween party as Ronald McDonald, do you remember? Oh, that's who you were. <laughs> You just come as you, <laughs> Jimmy. You were at that party. You went as a cyborg. No costume needed. <laughs> so mean to me. So mean. <laughs> Year before, you went as a puppet. No costume needed. <laughs> Year before, Federer. <laughs> no costume needed. <laughs> okay. Um, I showed you a clip of some school children in 1969. What were they doing? I put enjoying Richard's 18th birthday party. <laughs> <laughs> if I had an 18th birthday party, <laughs> I was in lockdown. <laughs> Ashley, Rob. Why don't you show uh, Richard what your answer Come is? Come on, Biff, what did you write? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm sorry, Richard, and then we felt like we should guess at the thing and we just put computer thing. Like some sort of computer thing, right? A computer right. thing. Uh, Adam, Jonathan, you've written. Um, we thought they were trying to build a woman. <laughs> it's like a British weird science. Yeah. So, uh, well, you you were right with computer thing. Yes. They were turning on the school computer. Oh. Oh. Right. Let's see what that's done to the scores. Okay, I can tell you, in last place, Adam and Jonathan oh. have four points. Right. Well, we're we're going to play. Four, uh, joint lead. Ashley and Rob have five. Uh, Richard and Noel have five. <laughs> Welcome back to the Big Fat Quiz of Everything. This round is all about music. Where would we be without music? Watching 14 middle-aged women dancing round a handbag in silence. That's what <laughs> OK, question time. For our first question, it's over to Irish heartthrob Ronan Keating. <laughs> Hello, Jimmy. Now, the 90s was an exciting time for me as Boyzone stormed the charts for the first time. But, and I've only come to terms with this now, we weren't the sexiest band out there. Oh, no, that mantle went to right, said Fred, of course. But can your teams tell me three things they were too sexy for? <laughs> can I now please do my perfect impression of Ronan Keating? Yes, yes, you if may. If not now, when? <laughs> exactly, Jonathan. It's amazing how you can say that to my skin. Well, I'm raving this man. You can smell a da-da-da. He lied a da-da-da. I'm a one-man tribute band to Ronan Keating. Right, OK, next question on this. Uh, one of the most popular wedding floor fillers is the Copacabana. Let's have a listen. Oh, yeah. At the Copacabana, Copacabana, the hottest spot north of Havana. Oh, OK, that's the Copacabana. Incredibly upbeat song. Right. The song's lyrics don't quite fit the uplifting music. What I want to know is, what is that song actually about? What actually happens to Lola? <laughs> oh, Lola is. He's never heard that song. He died. How cool is Noel Fielding? He is just perfect. I've never heard that song. <laughs> Have you never heard that song? What? No. Really? What? What? My mum and dad like Judas Priest. What do you expect? <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't have that in the house. I tried, that's how I could be rebellious when I was growing up, by putting that on. <laughs> For our next question, it's over to the one and only Jon Snow, who's reporting on one of the biggest hits of the 80s. Over to you, Jon. Police have raided a funky little hut in the middle of a field in Atlanta after reports that it was being used as a love getaway. <laughs> Officers were alerted to the site by a faded sign at the side of the road and discovered revelers lining up outside just to get down. Inside, party girls were found hugging and a-kissing, dancing and a-loving, and wearing next to nothing, because it was hot as an oven. It is thought that the majority of those present arrived in a 20-seat Chrysler described as being as big as a whale. <laughs> the owner of the hut declined to comment, but warned that fools ought to stay away. Back to you, Jimmy. Thank you, John. Yeah. He's so cool, right? He's so cool, yeah. Why is he so cool? Because she knows everything. I know. She just knows the news. <laughs> I think you he want... records it really early in the day, and then they make that shit happen. <laughs> 
news works. <laughs> Last music question. Take a look at this clip of John Lennon. What is he apologising for? Well, I suppose the things I said are accurate, but out of context, you know. But would and, you put uh, them in context? Well, I can't. It was a long time ago, but I just didn't mean what everybody thinks I meant, you know. That's are you sorry you said it? I am, yes, you know, even though it's, it's not. I never meant what people think I meant by it. I'm still sorry I opened my mouth. Just saying that. So what was, what was John Lennon apologising for there? Jimmy, do you know what I'm going to do? Put a Malteser in between two giant buttons. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> OK, you ready for some answers? Yes, Jimmy. OK, here we go. So Ronan Keating wanted to know what right said Fred were too sexy for. Uh, what do you got? I need three things for a point. I went for sure and then Ashley took over and put education and respect for women. <laughs> When you kill Noel, <laughs> that's how he has passage to the afterlife via two chocolate buttons. You're crying. You're crying chocolate. You're crying tears. chocolate tears. <laughs> it's like what happens when you just find out you've got type two diabetes. Oh, sure. <laughs> Uh, Adam, Jonathan, what did you get? We, uh, we couldn't remember. We thought they were too sexy for their prostate exam. <laughs> too sexy for their text bracket. My shirt, my car, your party in Milan. They all qualify. Good. You got a point right there. Well, what have you got, Noel Richard? We forgot deodorant. <laughs> which he was. He refused. He just, um, was too sexy. <laughs> Braille. Um, <laughs> dentistry exam. What does that say there? This I song. So you've got you've got shirt, car, and this song written down. Shirt, car, and this song, and and also um, erections. <laughs> points, points, no points. <gasps> wow. Do we get points for that? We yeah, did, yeah. You got you got three things that are in the song. Really? Uh, dry your chocolate eyes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, next up, we had you listen to the lovely upbeat holiday anthem, Copacabana. I wanted to know what actually happened in the song. Uh, what have you got? Uh, Adam, explain to us what happened in the Coca Cabana. Uh, you know, I don't remember, but I think it ends with her either going on loose women or taking her <laughs> own life or both. <laughs> uh, Noel, Richard, I'm not happy with your answer. I presume Noel was involved. I'm not no. cheating, I'm just checking my chocolate eyes. <laughs> uh, Lola's feet melted. <laughs> I haven't heard the song, have I? My parents liked Iron Maiden, I told you. There's four so Iron Maiden fans. <laughs> Ashley, Rob, what have you got? We're particularly happy with our little flight away yeah. from here, aren't well, we? Ashley well, thought that Lola met the kinks and she was really nervous and couldn't say her name properly and then they wrote a song. Lola. <laughs> so you've written an answer about a different song. Yeah. <laughs> What, what happened was uh, the love of Lola's life was murdered in front of her, uh, so she turned to alcohol and loses her mind at the Copacabana. She lost her mind. That's in the song. Why didn't we remember that? Uh, well, here he is, singing about mental health issues and murder. <laughs> Good, I might get his album. <laughs> so no one gets a point there. No one knew what happened at the Copacabana. Yeah. Uh, you saw Jon Snow reporting on one of the uh, songs of the century. What was it? We got the Love Shack, baby. Oh. B52. It's the B52. Thank, uh, no, oh, Richard, do you get this? Right. That's right. Richard, Richard got yeah, that. Oh, so they're playing that at the indie disco, are they? Okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we just put hugging and a kissing. And then we put, we are two young Saz babes. <laughs> OK, because that's sort of what young people would do. <laughs> well, let's go back to Jon Snow for the answer. <laughs> Jon Snow's got enough in the bank that he can do that, and he's still cooler than the ancient fucks. <laughs> I showed you a clip of John Lennon apologising. What was he apologising for? Adam, uh, Jonathan, you're... Well, we were referencing something we raised earlier, which is we think he might have been apologising for dissing Drake in one of his songs. <laughs> he, uh, but... he was suggesting that Drake ghostwrites his songs. <laughs> And anyway, then, listen, obviously, obviously he was be apologising because he had said that the Beatles were bigger than Jesus. 
Yeah. Uh, no, uh, yeah. no. <laughs> Come on, set up straight. You're a bad example to Richard. Richard's been really good on the no, quiz. It's OK. Noel needs to reset. <laughs> So, uh, he looks like he's got weird little hooves. Hey, come on. <laughs> Myself and Noel have the same sort of shoes. Like, every time I think, like, my shoes could technically be your I legs, mean, you wouldn't know. If you cut away for a second and then come back and you put your legs down, <laughs> just for a second, and then you put my legs... Are you carrying on like, to me? Yeah. <laughs> this is how you do it, right? How does he do this? And you this? just put my legs up there. <laughs> I'm out now, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> OK, what else have you got there? You've got... I can see Beatles Jesus written... I, I also put that he was apologising for failures and kindness, which I think is something we could all, <laughs> at this point of the quiz, maybe reflect on. Did he say that he was bigger than Jesus? Maybe he meant, like, in height, and there's four of them. <laughs> they're all standing on each other's shoulders. Because Ringo was five foot six. Yeah. And plus, Jesus was on a crucifix. That gives another couple of feet, doesn't it? <laughs> A fun game to play with the Beatles, or a lot of bands actually, is to make scatological titles from their songs. Uh, like The Long and Winding Turd. <laughs> hey Pooh. Hey Pooh, not bad, yeah. I mean, that is good. Um, yeah. Um, oh, I like this game, I'll be honest. Love, love me poo. There you go. Now you're playing. Yesterday, I had a shit. <laughs> Ashling Rob, what did you have for this? What was he apologising for? Um, sideburns and Barnet. <laughs> what? That's what? not acceptable. <laughs> I'm sorry, are we <laughs> saying here that John Lennon isn't cool? That's what we're... we're yeah. No, no, we like him. Uh, oh, right, OK. No, everyone likes John Lennon. No, whatever. It's fine, no. It's fine. Hey, Richard. No, it's fine. I bring my own lunch in anyway. Like, it's much better than the school lunch, actually. <laughs> and it's, like, more nutritious. <laughs> and I can get whatever I want. Like, my mum just gets it, whatever I want. <laughs> So when you knock over the tray, it's fine, because I was full. <laughs> okay, I, think, I was already I think, full. I think we're just having a flashback. I was full. It's fine. Oh. I just, like, ate a load of really, like, amazing sweets, and you didn't even see it, because I was in the toilet. <laughs> Did you used to eat your lunch in the toilet, Richard? Sergeant Pooper's Lonely Farts <laughs> 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 OK, now time for a special bonus round. I'm going to show you uh, pictures from three movies which have all been subtly improved. Can you tell me which films these pictures are from? <laughs> OK, here's the first one. Now, what's going on there? Yeah. Oh, my God, is that I... you, Jimmy? And that's the coolest you've ever looked. <laughs> <laughs> have you done that? Jimmy, you should dress like that. I'd actually shag you there. <laughs> <laughs> here's the second film. Oh. <laughs> Well, they've airbrushed something out of that photo. <laughs> uh, here's the third film. <laughs> I've got to say, Richard Iwadi, you've never looked better than there. <laughs> and Jonathan, that moustache, you should make that happen. I could grow that. You could grow that in about an hour. <laughs> Can you grow a beard, Richard? Have you ever had a beard? This is a very strange time to conduct an interview. <laughs> <laughs> I've had beards, yeah. Was it doing university to, like, impress chicks? Now, let's, let's just deal with this hostility now. <laughs> just deal with it. I think we should all hug it out, guys. I don't know that physical affection's Come on, the, uh, you want to touch squishy, bushy, bushy? Come on. Who wants a new friend? Who wants a cute new friend? Looks left out. I'm going to give him a blowjob. <laughs> See you in a minute. Yeah, he hasn't washed for three days. I'm not going to swap seats. Let's just swap. Do you feel better now, though? The power I... of touch, Richard. No, I mean, I. <laughs> I feel, what, um, I feel what's the, wor worse. I feel worse. <laughs> <laughs> OK, all right, let's get some answers on this. OK, so the first picture, let's have a look, was me as the child catcher in Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Yeah, oh, oh, everyone gets points for that. Uh, second one, let's have a look, me taking a relaxing shower in Psycho. Well, and you look very good in the shower, Jimmy. Yeah. <laughs> and the third one? 
all of us as Scottish struggies in train spotting. That's how it should have looked. Uh, train spotting, train spotting, train spotting. Everyone got train spotting points Woo! all round. Yeah. Let's take a look at the scores. I can tell you, in last place currently, Ashling and Rob have eight. Yes. In second place, Adam and Jonathan have ten. Yes. In the lead at the moment, Noel and Richard, who would have thunk it, with yes. eleven. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. See you after the break for more sex, betrayal, drugs and violence. See you in a bit. Welcome back to the Big Fat Quiz of Everything. The next round is all about crime and punishment. In the 18th century, the UK began sending prisoners... Just... <laughs> what? We literally were just discussing and we were saying, well done. <laughs> Because it's not said enough, you know, there's a lot of <laughs> stuff on here that yeah. people are like, oh, you, you, oh, you stuttered, ah, and they're on you and stuff. And we just wanted to take a bit yeah. of time out and say, bloody well done, Jimmy. Yeah. It was not easy to stand up there saying some of those jokes. You know they're not going to get a laugh. And you, <laughs> you, know, you, you probably know halfway through sometimes. You, I can see in your eyes there's a little bit, it's like seeing a dog going up to a hurdle and they go, I'm not going to make it. <laughs> Sometimes, and we were just saying, bloody good on him, because a lot of people would just cry. <laughs> in the 18th century, the UK began sending prisoners to specially built colonies in Australia, although sadly, many Australians have now returned to the scene of the crime and are back behind bars, specifically the walkabout in Earl's Court. <laughs> it's lovely. <laughs> Should we kick on with questions? For our first question, it's over to none other than Jerry Springer. Hey, Jimmy, uh, on the Jerry Springer Show, we have all sorts of dysfunctional families, mobsters, gangsters, but frankly, they're all pussycats compared to the notorious East End bad guys you call the craze. What is the nickname that they give to their crew of gangsters? OK, so Jerry Springer wants to know what the craze called their gang. Yeah. What was London like back in those days, Adam, Jonathan? <laughs> It was so foggy. <laughs> Next question. What is it legal to do at home from the age of five, but prohibited in the House of Commons chamber unless you're the Chancellor delivering a budget? So this is something which is illegal to do if you're under five? It's illegal under five, over the age of five. Five it's up, fine. you're fine. But what legal. laws are there for people between the age of one and nearly five? I'm not familiar with... Well, this is why it's an interesting question. It's a weird <laughs> thing. OK. All right, so next question. Take a look at this old American news footage. What are they reporting on? The men the walls couldn't hold are Frank Morris and John and Clarence Anglin. Authorities believe that Morris, who has a superior IQ, masterminded the escape. They painstakingly fashioned dummies of plaster with hair of paintbrush bristles to stand in for them during cell check while they covered an escape hole with a cardboard grill. The escape triggered the greatest manhunt in San Francisco's history. Whatever their fate, the three convicts have apparently accomplished a feat that many have tried with no success. OK, so what news story were they reporting on there? I've decided I, I think I know what Adam looks like. Oh, I don't. You look like a priest that's lost the little white bit from there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, he's... I mean... Like, oh, they, yeah, let's make one. But I think you look like a handsome priest, like an Italian priest. <laughs> You look quite like the fella from The Exorcist. <laughs> yeah, we, it's like we brought you in to try and deal with Noel. <laughs> Power of Christ compels you! <laughs> <laughs> OK, next question. Which historical piece of equipment was known by the nicknames The Hungry Lady and The National Razor? No. Father That's Adam, write something down. Hungry which hungry which historical pieces of equipment? That one's an easy one, whereas the one, two questions ago about the five-year-old, I still can't... I've got no idea, yeah, and I'm so excited. Do you want some answers? Are you ready for answers? Well, I can't wait for that answer in particular. Uh, all right, first up, Jerry Springer asked you what the craze called their gang. What did you get? Uh, the, the crazy guys. And I've done a catchphrase on the answer screen, and Brilliant. I thought it's enough around yeah. where you can guess what the catchphrase is okay. as we go down the answers. Well, it's been a fun. Adam, Jonathan. Once again, we're reflecting what the young person would say, and we're saying the cray craze. Oh, great. <laughs> nice. Uh, uh, Noel, Richard? We put the ruffians. <laughs> the answer is the firm, but no one got that. Oh. Oh. They call the game the firm. Oh. Oh, I asked yes. you what you could do at home age just five that you can't do if you're in the House of Commons unless you're the Chancellor delivering a budget. Noel, Richard, what have you got? 
We put burp in a pencil case. <laughs> And you think the Chancellor, when delivering a budget, is allowed to burp in a pencil <laughs> case? <laughs> and then zip it up and leave it for later on? <laughs> Adam, I'm pretty sure you nailed this, didn't you? Smoking? I don't know. <laughs> Impersonating an MP? <laughs> Ashley, Rob. The only thing I know that you're, you've got to have at five is orange cowpole. Because <laughs> that was a bad day for me. Because strawberry cowpole, up till five. And then over five, it's orange cowpole, so I think maybe the Chancellor's got a stressful day and he's knocking back a bit of cowpole. <laughs> or was it booze? Right. We thought it was booze. He's allowed a little drink, and when you're over five, you're allowed a little drink indoors. Well, booze is the right answer. <gasps> you can drink from the age of five at home. I showed you some old news footage. What story were they reporting on? Alcatraz. Alcatraz? Well, you just yeah. clearly escaped from Alcatraz. Mm. Mm. And what about you, Ashling, Rob? We said uh, escape from Alcatraz. Yeah, well, you all got it absolutely right. And yes. a massive bird has appeared. Oh! oh catchphrase time! <laughs> Say what you see. Is the catchphrase bird? <laughs> no. Were well, you taking into consideration what's in the top right hand corner? But what's in the. I can't see it. Where, where it's you... under the red X. And it's, and a, it's, it's a clock it's with AM written on it. Early bird. Uh, Early bird. The worm. Yes, the worm. yes! Yes! You'll see the worm in a minute. <laughs> Next answer. I asked you what historical piece of equipment was known by the nicknames The Hungry Lady and The National Razor. What did you go for this one, Noel Richard? Flymo. <laughs> Adam, Jonathan. It's Madame la Guillotine. That's we the went French for noose. Right. You thought it was the noose. Yeah. It was called, was called the National Razor. I did say guillotine. All right, fucking hell. But... <laughs> Oh, it, wouldn't be, it wouldn't be called nagging if you just did it right the first time. <laughs> <laughs> There's some marital discord here. Oh, yeah. uh, now, that boy. <laughs> he ain't clever, but he's mine. <laughs> it was, of course, the guillotine. OK, now it's time for a special bonus round. For our next question, you've each got a wig under your desk. <gasps> Get them out, put them on. Oh! oh. Noel, take off the wig you have on. <laughs> Put on another wig. Oh my God, I love this. Wow. Well, I I'm looking for Richard. <laughs> wow. No, yeah. well, I, I no mean... fucking difference over here, mate. <laughs> There's literally, if you turned up like that this evening, I would not have known. <laughs> Sure. Jonathan, <laughs> you just looked like you a couple of years ago. <laughs> when you were first on Channel 4. I, I, I don't know what, where the situation lies with this wig, but I am wearing this one home. <laughs> Sorry, Adam, could you could you turn around so we can just see your hair from behind? Can you turn around so we can just... Because that is... Oh, that's really yeah. distressing. Yeah, that's... Look, yeah. oh, look, a beautiful lady. Look, <laughs> a beautiful lady, oh. and then... Ashley, you know that poster, the, the sort of women to work World War One famous poster? Oh, this. That Why one. Really? That's exactly yeah. it. Look at that. Me? <laughs> I simply want to know the name of each hairstyle. Okay, so each hairstyle has a specific name. name. Mm. Have you all got answers? No. Yes. No. All right, let's take a look. What you got? Uh, Rob's haircut, what did you think it was, Noel? Uh, curtains. 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 That's what we went for. Curtains, curtains is the right answer. Shut up! What? It's a bad it's, it really does suit you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Ashling B, uh, your hair was. Uh, what did you put, Adam? Jonathan? We put Vera Lynn because we couldn't think of the actual wartime hairstyle. Vera Lynn's pretty good, but it's not right. Did anyone get it? We went for we Land, Land Girls. Girls. Land Girls is the name of the movie. No one got it. It was Victory Rolls. Oh! Victory Rolls. Uh, Jonathan. We went with my own was the mullet, we thought. Is the mullet? You got the mullet? Yeah, Rob? Yeah, we got Richard? the mullet. Richard? Mullet. OK, and you... Uh, <laughs> Adam, you want your hair? Yeah. The Rachel. Yeah. The Rachel, you got the Rachel. Did I you get the Rachel? The Rachel. Everyone yeah. got the Rachel? OK, yeah. and then uh, Richard? Bob. 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 OK, you all got Bob. Bob. OK, and Noel, lastly, Noel. Beehive. 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 Behind yourself. Everyone got it, OK. Yeah. Well, let's Yay. see what that's done to the scores. I can tell you in last place, Ashling sure. and Rob have 15. Oh, uh, Adam and Jonathan just had with 16. In the lead, Noel and Richard with 17. That's right. Good haircut, Noel. <laughs> We're going to take a quick break now. See you in a bit. <laughs> Welcome back to the Big Fat Quiz of Everything. This round is all about food and drink. 
The sandwich was named after John Montague, the fourth Earl of Sandwich. I love sandwiches, particularly if I don't know either of the guys. <laughs> That is the Jimmy I know and love. <laughs> Thank you. Right, let's have some more questions, shall we? Take a look at this clip of two guys in a bar. What have they just done? Whoa. And you can also feel it in your ears, you know? <laughs> okay. Sean? Yeah. What do you think about it? Tough? Yeah. As much pain as I've been in in a while. <laughs> wow. OK, what have they just done? A uh, Noel uh, posing there for an album cover, presumably. <laughs> Not even okay. going to come back at you. Gonna is is the name of the me. first track. <laughs> Um, OK. Here's an all-round nut job and creator of Scientology, L. Ron Hubbard, oh, yes. conducting an experiment on some tomatoes. My question is, what theory is he trying to prove? Nice. Yes, you like that? I love it. OK, he likes this. OK, next question. Shortly after entering his first term as president, George Bush Sr. banned something from the White House and Air Force One. What was it? You bet. Back. <laughs> Noel's back. <laughs> Noel's back. I just... I don't want to build this up, but Noel is... <laughs> Back. <laughs> okay, final question. In the 18th century, if you nipped out for some cuckold's comfort, ladies tonight or knock me down, what would you be doing? Oh, Just think back, old men, think back. <laughs> Jimmy, these are some tough questions. Oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's you know, well, it's I everything. Like it's nice, isn't it? Isn't You're sort of learning and having, having yeah. great laughs. <laughs> okay, you ready for some answers? Sure. Yes. Of course you are. Okay. First up, I showed you a clip of two guys in a bar. What do you think they had just done? What have you got, Adam, Jonathan? We thought they, we, they drank some of that super, super hot sauce that you shouldn't actually drink. OK. Noel, Richard? Well, guess who did what here? <laughs> OK, well, what do you think? I said ketamine. <laughs> <laughs> and I put said an undermining remark. <laughs> Neither of those things are food. I didn't realise it was food and drink, sorry. No. Where, where do you think the clue might have been that it was about food and drink? Uh, what's it at the top, Jimmy? <laughs> Was at the top, wasn't it, Noel? Yeah, I know. It's not a real quiz, is it, you dick? <laughs> like you're not a real human. <laughs> I'm a real boy. <laughs> Had they watched Marley and me? <laughs> <laughs> One of them said it's as much pain as I've been in recently. Yeah, it's a tough watch, Marley and me. I don't know if you said, I don't even like dogs, but I was all over the place. <laughs> It was either that or I ate a chilli. Did they eat a chilli? Well, the answer is uh, they've just eaten the world's hottest chilli uh, known yes. as the Carolina Reaper. So, you points for Ashley and Rob. Yes, mate. I asked you what L. Ron Hubbard, founder of Scientology, was doing with those tomatoes. What did you think? I put he was testing that even though it's called a fruit, does it feel like a vegetable? No. Uh, <laughs> Adam, Jonathan. He's, we think he yeah. was growing their Scientologist's greatest uh, public supporter, Tom Arto Cruz. Oh! <laughs> no, Richard. And the plants can feel pain. That is exactly the right answer. It is. What? Yeah. yeah, he was testing whether plants can feel pain, and apparently he claimed that the tomatoes were screaming. <laughs> Next up, I asked you what George Bush banned from the White House and Air Force One. What did you put? Reggae. <laughs> <laughs> Number three. Yeah, very good. Number three was going to be big. Very I'm good. back. Food and drink. I'm going under the table now till the next round. <laughs> you fucks can do what you like. <laughs> Old fucks, what did you put? Oh, we forgot it was food and drink. So we put George Bush Jr. and clowns. <laughs> Neither of which we now realise could possibly be the correct answer. And so I'd like to apologise. Oh, OK. And what, no problem at all. What, uh, Ashley, oh, Rob? I went for nuts. Because I just saw he might be allergic and they don't like them on a plane, do they? Well, let's go over to George Bush Sr. for the answer. I do not like broccoli. <laughs> and I haven't liked it since I was a little kid. And my mother made me eat it. And I'm President of the United States. And I'm not going to eat any more broccoli. So that's pretty much the first thing he did. The rest of the world was sorted back then. Everything was fine. 
no points there for anyone. Uh, OK, I asked you what you'd be doing in the 18th century if you nipped out for some cuckold's comfort, ladies' delight or knock me down. Uh, well, it's obviously something intoxicating to take your mind off being a cuckold. So we put hello in and we put port for a gentler answer. OK, Noel, Richard? Noel put going to Anne Bar, which is, is, is very odd. <laughs> <laughs> going to Anne Bar. Going to Anne Bar. Sorry, I just went to the A Bar, but I'm having a breakdown. <laughs> going to a Bar, but A Bar, where you drink Anne cocktails. Bar. Exactly. You, you had me at breakdown. <laughs> <laughs> OK, uh, Ashing, Rob? Well, we went for a Turkish delight, a prostitute or booze. <laughs> Well, it was booze, but I think we needed a more specific answer. It was gin. Gin. Oh. It was gin. gin. It was mother's ruin. They're all names for gin. Right, so no points there. Okay, oh, okay now it's time for a special bonus round. It's time to bring on the cheese and coffee. Woo! Thank you very much indeed. Oh, we'll come up and grab a coffee, everyone. It's a very special oh. coffee. It is the most expensive coffee in the world. Oh, no. Get involved. Just grab mm. a coffee. I've enjoy. never had Costa before. I know this one. <laughs> it's exciting, isn't it? Yeah, OK, grab a coffee. And then there's also... There is some cheese there. Have a smell of the cheese. Oh, my Lord. Oh, my God. That's a pungent cheese. That's a powerful oh, cheese. Oh, that's a powerful God. cheese, yeah. Well, well, you all got to sit down and write down what is special about this coffee and this cheese. Yeah. What's special about the coffee is it's drinkable. What's special about the cheese is none of us are going anywhere fucking near it. Yeah. Because it's just... <laughs> For a laugh. Wow. Ooh, that is... I mean, it's, it's pretty... I don't know if the audience are getting any of that yet, oh. but that'll be drifting over your way. Oh, you're going to have to bury that later. <laughs> so it's... Uh, I can tell you the coffee is called Kopi Luwak. It's from Indonesia. And what's the cheese called? And the cheese is called Kasu Mazu. It's a delicacy in Sardinia. OK, so you've got to write down what is special about the cheese and the coffee. I can't have a coffee this late. I'll be up till Tuesday next week. <laughs> OK. All right, have you all got something written down? Yes. Uh, yes. OK, let's have a look, see what you got. No, Richard. Anus coffee and anus cheese. <laughs> OK, uh, Adam, Jonathan? We, we thought the, the beans of the coffee had been eaten by an animal and then pooped out. I think it's either a monkey or something like that, because I've heard about them. But the cheese, we thought maybe an animal drinks the milk and then vomits it out. So we, <laughs> it takes it so we think it's a poop, coffee, and a vomit cheese. Whoa. All right, Ashling, Rob? Uh, we went. Well, you... Shot through a weasel. And then I've put. <laughs> for, um, from an ass slash vag. <laughs> I can tell you the coffee beans have passed through a wild cat like animal yeah. called a palm civet. Basically, oh, it's coffee civet. that's been shat out by a cat. <laughs> well, they did well to get it in the cup. <laughs> Fair play. Uh, now, and the Kasu Mazu cheese is a delicacy in Sardinia. It contains maggots. So, so basically, they get pecorino cheese oh, and, and they, they, they let maggots go into it, flies and maggots go into it. The maggots eat the cheese and then they poop it out and it gives the cheese a different kind of flavour. Yeah. And does anyone fancy a bit? No. Not really, Jimmy. Well, apparently, if the maggots are alive, it's edible. If the maggots are dead, then it definitely isn't. We so cannot eat, eat it. So you eat it with live maggots in it? Yeah. So you uh, want us to eat the we maggots? We don't know whether it's got uh, maggots in it or not. So if I do that bit, hang on. I What's this down here? Oh, uh, those oh, are crackers. Can I take oh, a bit oh, out of my fingers? I don't want to smell your fingers down my fingers. I'll hold it and you slice it. And I can tell you there is nothing living in this. No maggots. No maggots living. Oh. oh, that's a disappointment. Oh, no, there's nothing living in it. Oh. Uh, OK, well, not to worry. Do you, do you want to have a look at this cheese in action? Take a look. This is the moment of magic. <laughs> the pecorino cheese has been transformed into kazu mazu. The larvae eat the rotting cheese. As they digest it, it passes through their bodies, giving Kazumazu its unique, legendary flavour and texture. Can you imagine the weird old man who convinced people that that was a real thing? <laughs> Don't worry about it. We put the maggots on the cheese, then we sell it to Western people. They all eat it. Think, yay! What? Like. <laughs> OK, let's see what that's done to the scores. OK, I can tell you, Ashling and Rob are in last place with 17, Adam and Jonathan next with 18. In the lead, surprisingly, Noel and Richard with 20. Wow. Who knows? <laughs> see you after the break for the final part of the Big Fat Quiz. See you in a bit.
back to the big fat quiz of everything. The next round is all about film and TV. Benedict Cumberbatch's Sherlock has been a worldwide success. Like Sherlock, I too sometimes like to go for a walk in my mind palace. I walk out into Mind Street, down to the Mind Bank, and withdraw some wanks. <laughs> Right, ready for some big fat questions? Jimmy, can I put my special cape on for the last round? Yeah. yeah. Okay, sure. Okay, cool. It's my lucky cape. Oh. Just for the last round, yeah? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. check this out. It's like Elvis if he was Gene Simmons. Imagine this. <laughs> I tell you what, don't hang about outside my house on a Monday morning, you'll go with a van. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Jimmy. First up, here's Captain James T. Kirk doing what he does best in the TV cult classic, Star Trek, copping off with an alien hottie. <laughs> what I want to know is what happens next with James T. Kirk and Lady Gaga. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, what? yes. I actually heard the ancient fox go, oh, I remember this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, next question. Have a look at this black and white photo of one of the most famous actors who ever lived. Quite simply, who is it? It's the guy in um, Peaky Blinders. <laughs> <laughs> it is not the guy in Peaky Blinders. Goodness. Richard, it's, it literally looks like you've got a giant devil on one shoulder. <laughs> You don't undermine my dark side. Shouldn't there be an angel on the other side? Not in this court. <laughs> For our next question, it's over to sporting legend Eddie the Eagle Edwards. Hi, Jimmy. Eddie the Eagle Edwards here. Well, my real name is Michael. But Eddie the Eagle, well, it sounds a bit cooler. Now, in the film Top Gun, the pilots also had some awesome nicknames. But can your teams name three of them? Okay, so we're looking for the call signs um, from Top Gun. Yeah. If you become a Scientologist, do you get that jacket and girlfriend? <laughs> I think you've already got the jacket, haven't you? <laughs> you? Do you like my jacket? I really like your jacket. I think it's great. Have you felt how soft it is? It's it? silk, mate. It's wearing a silk jacket. Is it jacket? silk? It feels yeah. good. Oh, it does feel lovely, but I imagine it smells a bit of cheese now. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> Many nice things. <laughs> uh, what's it like in the rain, Rob? Awful in the rain. And also, it really creases. Oh. But when you do TV things, they like iron it nice. So the you only it. come on this show so someone will yeah. iron your jacket. Yeah. And see you. Oh. <laughs> now, time for a say what you see. These pictures spell oh, out a famous oh. movie tagline. So what is it? It's quite a good one. Mm. Famous mm. movie tagline. Mm. Ah! And there's two of them. Yeah, we got it. Satisfying, right? Yeah. So this is a good fun round. Right. You all got answers? Oh. I think Richard's about to kiss Noel. <laughs> I'm just nestling for warmth. <laughs> We're roosting, all right? <laughs> Once the cape's on, Jimmy, no one can resist. <laughs> I actually smashed it, don't worry about it. Yeah, you got it. Okay, you've all got something? Like all right, let's have a look. Okay, yeah. first up, I asked you what happened next with William Shatner and the alien lady. Uh, what do you think, Noel, Richard? I put <laughs> sexy times. <laughs> Ashley, Rob. Uh, she says, is it raining? I hadn't noticed. And then you're, he says, yeah, because it's not raining. <laughs> <laughs> like the end of four weddings. <laughs> okay, Adam, Jonathan. Well, we've got the way on time up because I remember watching this. Jonathan he, thinks he punches he her. He punches her. It's a really weird scene and he punches her. He, you think he punches her? Because they're being, the... they're being controlled And by... he's knocking her out so she can no longer be mind controlled, if I remember correctly. Uh, well, let's have a look at an enslaved William Shatner smooching a sexy green haired alien. <laughs> I'm sorry, Shannon. No, he's not. It's our Christmas special no. of EastEnders, isn't it? <laughs> so, so that's Star Trek 1969. William Shatner punches out the alien lady. Yes. And again, it was to save her from mind control. But even so, if you flick across that on the channels, it does look rather wrong. Yeah. OK, I showed you this black and white picture of one of the world's most famous movie stars. Did you all get this? Yes. Yes. Adam? Clearly, it's Meryl Streep. She's a genius. <laughs> 
OK, no. Chaplin. Chaplin, yeah. It's pretty sexy, Chaplin, there, isn't it? Oh, it's beautiful. We've gone for oh, Chaplin and drew a picture of his little hat. And I've got young, fit as Chaplin. OK, well, it was indeed Charlie Chaplin yes. as a young man. Yeah, looking beautiful. OK, um, Eddie the Eagle wanted to know three call signs or nicknames for the pilots in Top Gun. Did you get these? Yeah. Easy. Yeah. yeah. OK, what, what did you get? Uh, Icebox. Uh, I, mm, uh, no. Viscount Jismark. <laughs> <laughs> Incorrect. And then Ladyfinger. Ladyfinger. Yeah. <laughs> OK, uh, Ashling, Rob? Tomato. Uh, <laughs> um, Iceman Goose Maverick. Those are all correct. Not Tomato, the others. No. Um, no, Richard. Ice Goose, Maverick. Is there one called Slider? Slider. There is one called Slider, yeah. Wow. Whoa, you know that film. Yeah. Yeah. There's Viper, Jester, Cougar, Wolfman, Slider, Merlin, Sundown, Hollywood. Viscount, Jismark, Ladyfinger, and Icebox. <laughs> yes, that's the full <laughs> list. So give us all the points and move on, Jimmy. <laughs> OK, so you, you... No points, points, points. Thank you. Um, and finally, I say what you see. What did you all see? It's a tagline um, from a huge film. Can yeah. I just go to can I go to Ashling and Rob first on this? Pub hell, no one can point to the hill sheet cream. <laughs> Adam, Jonathan. In space, no one can hear you use scream. That's the right answer. Did you get it, Noel Richard? Yeah. I yeah. always felt that tagline meant, well, why can we hear any of the dialogue? <laughs> <laughs> OK, for our final question, I've got a special treat for you. Will you please welcome the Mariachis? <laughs> well, gentlemen, thank you. Thank you very much indeed for coming all the way from Croydon. Um, <laughs> Now, uh, you're going to play theme tunes from yes. three TV shows uh, yes. in a mariachi style. Si, senor. And then you just got to write down what three songs they're playing. Take it away. Theme tune to a TV show. The second one is Take It Away, Boys. Take it away with the last one. Jimmy, I think I'd like to see you in one of the hats. Yeah, sure. Stick it on. <laughs> That's all we got. I mean, well, I, 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 I don't know what tune you want me to bang out. And turn in. <laughs> right, let's have a look and see what you've got. No, Richard, what's the first one you got? Colombo. Colombo. 
<laughs> you, uh, Adam, Jonathan, please. Game of Thrones. It was magnificently played. Yes. Yeah, it was fabulous. Ashling, Rob. Game of Thrones, you, yeah. You, I got you in for Allo Allo, OK, what did you think the second one was? Oh. The news. No. The news. News and El Dorado you've gone for. <laughs> Honestly, gentlemen, don't take that as a personal snipe. These people are idiots. <laughs> OK, what was the second it one, Jonathan? It was Crystal Maze. Yeah, he was that. You, you got Crystal Maze. And yeah. what was the final one? Mastermind. Mastermind. We had a shocker. Well, let's have a look and see what that's done to the scores. There are possible 38 points to be earned this evening. Let's see how our teams did. In last place, Ashling and Rob have 20 points. I can In second place with 23, Adam and Jonathan. But the winners this evening with 25 points, Richard Iwadi and Noel Fielding. 25 points! <laughs> Guests, and thank you for watching. I've been Jimmy Carr. This has been the Big Fat Quiz of Everything. Good night. Play us out, boys.